Hello and welcome to the Getting Started tutorial for Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing. My name is Björn Teutrena. In this video, you will get to know the basic tools and workflows for reinforcement detailing. You will experience how easy it is to make 2D reinforcement drawings from 3D models in Autodesk Revit and you definitely will enjoy working with it. We will make reinforcement drawings for this beam together step by step. If you want to reproduce the following steps, you can download the shown project. Below this video in the comment, you can find a link. The product reinforcement detailing consists of software and a set of families, which can easily be modified to meet local or company standards. Creation of barless, bending schedules and cutlass for wire meshes are included as well. For an overview of the functionality of Sophistic software, please visit the website www.sophistic.com. After installation of Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing, an additional ribbon tab Sophistic Reinforcement with the related tools and controls will appear. When moving the cursor over a tool on the ribbon, a tooltip is displayed. The tooltip provides a brief description of the tool. While it is visible, you can press F1 to open the help that gives more information. When working with Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing, the following workflow is recommended. First, open a new project and load a content pack. Second, prepare the sheet by placing all required views. Third, check the Revit and Sophistic reinforcement settings. Fourth, model the reinforcement. Fifth, use Sophistic reinforcement detailing to make reinforcement drawings. Now let's open a project with a precast concrete beam. First, you have to load a Sophistic content pack. For further information, watch our video about content management. In this project, all required views are already placed on a sheet called A101 Precast Concrete Beam. Before placing the first rebar, we have to check the Revit reinforcement settings. We we'll get there via the Structure tab. Now we have to decide if structural rebar within area and path reinforcement should be hosted. That is recommended because later on in the project, you want to explode these systems in order to manipulate single rebars. Furthermore, we have to decide if hooks should be included in rebar shape definitions. In this project, we don't want to do that. In the Reinforcement Rounding tab, you can define the roundings of rebars. That's it. Now we can start modeling the reinforcement. We can do that by activating a view, selecting a building component and clicking in the ribbon bar on the rebar tool. Next, we have to make some settings. We choose the desired placement plane and layout rule like this. For the layout of the bars, we set maximum spacing to 100 mm and choose rebar with a diameter of 8 mm for the stirrups. In the rebar browser, we get a list of rebar shapes. Let's take this one. If we place the mouse cursor over the beam, we will get a preview. Click to place the rebars. The concrete cover is set in exemplary parameters within the family of the beam. Let's do it again with a length rebar at the bottom. This time we choose the layout rule fixed number. Keep on locating the other rebars until you are satisfied. Of course, you can switch the view and work plane in order to place reinforcement in different directions. We have prepared a fully reinforced beam for the next steps. The tools of Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing you can find in the Modify panel can be very useful. Before we start detailing, we have to decide which numbering mode we want to use in order to assign bar marks per project or per sheet. You can find that setting in the Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing settings. Most necessary is to decide that before setting bar marks. In the mode bar marks per project, the reinforcement is assigned to the entire project. The bar marks must be unique and you can create only a project wide banding schedule. This mode is recommended for smaller projects. In the mode bar marks per sheet, reinforcement must be assigned to a specific sheet. As in common conventional practice, in this mode you can create bending schedules for each individual sheet. We choose the last mode and click OK. In the next step, we have to assign the rebars to our sheet. You can check the related sheet of the rebars on the properties palette with the parameter soft sheet. 
After that, we can set marks for automatic numbering of reinforcement. Its operation detects identically reinforcement regarding rebar shapes, dimensions, materials, bar diameters, and so on. The command will differ depending on the selected mode of operation, whether the command affects the entire project or only a single sheet. You can check that with the parameter mark. Several other commands help you to manage the positioning of rebars. Let's start tagging the rebars. Until now we can see the whole reinforcement, but we only want to see certain rebars. For that, we can switch in the visual style hidden line in order to hide rebars on the beam and display detail families and tags later on. Sophistic reinforcement detailing delivers several commands to do so. First of all, we want to hide and tag rebars. The two places a symbolic representation of a rebar set together with a dimension line and an annotation. The rebar object is no longer visible on this view. Afterwards, we can tag all remaining rebars. The Tag All tool deletes and recreates all rebar and fabric sheet tags in one operation except tags placed with a Hide and Tag tool. In contrast to the command tag missing, all modification previously completed will be erased. This function can be very useful, for example, if you want to change the previously placed tag families and its position to your current annotation settings in the Settings dialog. Additionally, we can create dimensioned sketches of a rebar shape and play them together with a tag in the view next to the beam. We can either select the rebar or its tag. The rebar shape detail represents all instances of the corresponding bar mark. For this reason, the bar marks must already be set. If the rebar shapes are not visible yet, we have to manipulate the crop region of the view. Repeat the last steps for all other views. That's how easy you can make 2D reinforcement drawings from a 3D model. Last but not least, let's have a look at the analysis of the rebars. We can create schedules with a list of needed rebars and rebar shape lists. Before we generate these lists, we have to check some settings. On the Schedule tab in the Settings dialog, you can choose the bar shape visualization according to EN ISO or British Standard, the calculation method for the bar length, the document language and the output volume of the reinforcement schedule. Click OK when you are done. Now we can create a reinforcement schedule in a printable document in the Sophistic Report browser. You can find the command here. Its operation will differ depending on the selected mode of operation, whether the command affects the entire project or only a single sheet. Moreover, we can import all schedules to our sheet in Revit. The command insert schedule places the corresponding schedule from the project directly on the sheet. Now we can explode and move the tables to their appropriate location. That's it. When having completed this tutorial, you will be able to create 2D reinforcement drawings out of 3D models by using Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing. Further help and support can be found at the user forum, in our movies, within the program in the log file, or you can also contact our customer support at support at sophistic.de. We also recommend you to watch our other videos on this YouTube channel to learn more about Autodesk Revit and Sophistic tools. Thanks for watching.